My name is Ton Hagenbeek, I'm a hematologist from the Academic Medical Center in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And it's a privilege for me to uh, share with you on this lymphoma hub uh, a case uh, of a patient relapsing from Hodgkin lymphoma and give some ideas on challenges and opportunities that are out there. Well, the patient is a 64-year-old uh, uh, female with extensive relapse of classical Hodgkin lymphoma. That was histologically proven. I think that's important uh, if you can get tissue to really prove that you're dealing with a relapsing Hodgkin lymphoma and not a non-Hodgkin or whatever. And that was uh, that occurred that relapse 11 months after successful uh, induction uh, chemotherapy. She achieved a PET negative metabolic complete remission with ABVD. That was indeed given as first line treatment. But now she experienced a relapse and that was characterized by enlarged nodes above and under the diaphragm, lung nodules and liver involvement, so an extended uh, relapse. However, she had a good performance status and there were no significant laboratory abnormalities apart from an elevated uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So we appreciate that uh, Hodgkin lymphoma is a highly curable disease. We are still dealing with a significant fraction of relapses. Uh, patient presenting in limited stages and treated usually with combined modality treatment, radiation and uh, just a few courses of chemotherapy. They experience a relapse rate of about 10%. Patients treated in advanced stages, initially diagnosed, uh, have a relapse rate in the order of 30%. So a significant fraction of patients are in need of second-line treatment. Uh, if the, the, the relapse is really localized, non-bulky, at one lymph node area and the PET is otherwise negative, one might certainly consider to treat with involved field radiotherapy to sterilize the local relapse and wait and see after that. But if the uh, uh, relapse is uh, more extensive, uh, then uh, the standard of care at first relapse that's accepted worldwide is to go for a limited number of second-line chemotherapy courses, non-cross-resistant chemotherapy, two or three cycles, mainly to test for chemosensitivity. And regimens that are out there for many years now are DHAP or related regimens, ICE, VIM, IGEF, PEC, IFA, MIND, DEXA, BEAM, GVD, etc., etc., with all about the same activity. And then, if the relapse has proven to be chemosensitive in terms of achieving a partial remission or a complete remission or some centers even classify patients for the next step when they reach standard stable disease. When a response is achieved then it is useful to end up the treatment with high dose chemotherapy, marrow-based chemotherapy like BEAM or CBV followed by reinfusion of autologous stem cells that were uh, collected before. Now the autologous stem cell transplantation accepted the standard of care is based on these two studies that are presented on this slide. Uh, an old study by the British National Lymphoma Investigation presented by David Lynch. Years ago, high dose beam versus mini beam, only a small study in 40 patients, but a significant difference between the event free survival in the transplanted group, 53% three years PFS, versus only 10% in the chemotherapy treated group. Similar data from another study by Norbert Schmidt from the German High Grade Lymphoma Study Group, the HDR1, where DEXA beam uh, four times was compared to two DEXA beams plus high dose beam. And again, the data speak for themselves a better freedom from treatment failure, uh, survival at three years, 34% with chemotherapy and 55% with high dose treatment. So these two studies form the basis for accepting autologous stem cell transplantation in chemosensitive patients as standard of care in first extensive relapse of Hodgkin lymphoma. Our patient uh, suffered from an early relapse, as I described earlier. She relapsed within one year after achieving a PET negative CR. And we know from an analysis, again from the German Hodgkin study group, that uh, patients that relapse and are subsequently transplanted may be subdivided in three major risk groups after transplantation. The best uh, performing group are those patients that have a late relapse longer than one year after achieving a first remission. That's the upper curve on this slide, the green curve. 
And at the other end of the spectrum, there are patients that are, do not respond to first line and go on to second line and autologous, the primary refractory progressive patients. They have the worst prognosis and the early relapse, like our patient, is somewhere in between. So these curves also really ask for improvement. Uh, so how can we improve on these uh, curves, in particular the high-risk patients that enter an autologous transplant program? Well, the thought has been to intensify the conditioning regimen, so instead of just giving CBV or BEAM, to intensify this conditioning regimen uh, prior to autologous stem cell transplantation. And secondly, there's a lot of new data on the possible predictive role of PET scanning after completion of second-line chemotherapy, so just prior to marrow ablative conditioning followed by autologous stem cell transplantation. And I just want to touch upon an important study that uh, was presented just a couple of years ago, a European exercise and multicenter study, the H2RT, mainly run by the German Hodgkin Study Group together with the EURTC lymphoma group for relapse, Hodgkin lymphoma, first relapse. Well, what were the results of this important study? Uh, 190, 190 patients received standard treatment, 122 were randomized to intensified conditioning, and the results are given on this slide, very straightforward, there was not a difference at all in terms of progression-free survival of PFS by treatment arm, neither for overall survival of P of O.5. In other words, intensifying the conditioning regimen did not really uh, solve the problem, did not, leave it, did not really improve the outlook on progression-free or overall survival. That was a dead end, but it had to be tested, of course. Well, this, this concludes uh, this part uh, for the lymphoma hub. So, uh, with the major conclusion that second line uh, standard worldwide is chemotherapy, non cost resistant chemotherapy to check for chemosensitivity and then round up with high dose treatment and autologous stem cell transplantation. But there is room for improvement of the results after that.